ஆ ரவி ஹலோ ரவி ரவி எஸ் ஐ அம் ரெடி ஆ யா எஸ் நவ वी कैन स्टार्ट ஆ எஸ் குமரன் ஆ எஸ் எஸ் ஆ யா ஆ யூ கேன் स्टार्ट ஆ थैंक यू ஹேப்பி மார்னிங் டு ஆல் ஐ அம் டாக்டர் எஸ் ரவி ஐ டேக் திஸ் வண்டர்புல் ஆப்பர்ச்சூனிட்டி டு எக்ஸ்டெண்ட் ஏ வார்ம் வெல்கம் to all the participants and organizers of this international online seminar on natural products for health diseases i am privileged to express my hearty welcome to dr pachiyappan raman associate professor department of biotechnology school of bioengineering srm institute of science and technology for the fifth day of the program i am also honored to introduce the renowned speaker dr r pachiyappan he completed his credentials from ug degree in university of madras with with the specialization of botany and plant pathology he got cleared icar net exam in 2005 he has won honors and awards during his pg degree from professor p s sundaralingam gen prize and professor v n rao endowment prize for having first rank in the university examinations and he got best presenter award and as well as project associate awards too then he joined as an erasmus researcher in the year 2008 at university of kotingen germany and later moved to university of paris france in 2009 he has done his post doctoral fellow at the university of verona italy in 2010 he started his teaching career as assistant professor in 2011 at srm institute of science and technology in the mid of 2017 he got a new assignment for 6 months as visiting faculty at the university of utah salt lake city usa then he came back and promoted as associate professor at present he is guiding for phd scholars btech and mtech programs for their research and he produced more more than two doctorates he participated and presented paper in more than 30 national and international conferences and symposia he has more than 25 research articles published in reputed national and international journals and also published three book chapters to his credit apart from that he has been invited for more than 10 conference seminars as a resource person and conference chair with with this simple introduction may i now invite dr pachiyappan raman to deliver his speech on ants and human welcome you sir no audio uh you can uh, thank you thank you dr ravi uh, pachipan unmute yourself uh, dr pachipan unmute yourself okay. uh, can you can you hear me ah uh, yes, yeah. yes yes uh, thank you dr ravi sir and uh, it's a privilege and i am very happy to present my research as well as uh, the major portion of that today's presentation is just basics and little bit i am touching what we are doing in srm university and uh, uh, that the majority of the content i would like to uh, acknowledge that uh, 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 the plant cell and plant physiology american society of uh, plant physiology and from that uh, 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 society only i have uh, taken majority of the uh, the contents which i am going to present today so so uh, i also i would like to thank uh, dr kumaran for uh, giving me this opportunity for presenting and sharing my research views as well as in the plant how that the plant can helps for uh, human health also 
I extend my thanks to the, the authorities of uh, Periyar University for conducting such a kind of webinar series to benefit of that the college of uh, students, those who are comes new uh, to take up as a botany, as a uh, plant biology or botany in their UG and PG levels. So uh, can I can I share that the Kumaran and the PPT? Yes, uh, you can share now. Uh, thank you. That, thank you. Uh, you can allow the participant and mute yeah. all. Ah, okay. Thank sure, you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. timing i am muting my video and now okay Plants and human health, in general, every day what we are, uh, 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 you know, our diet does contain the fruits, vegetables, seeds, and etc. So if you see what we are eating, what what is our food? The food mainly it comes from the plants, whether it may be a vegetable, whether it may be a seed, or the rice or wheat, if uh, not we are consuming as a chapati. And in South, we are consuming as a rice, uh, as a seed. It all comes from that, uh, the, the plant seeds. Also the leafy vegetables, also the leaves, fruits, and then the shoots, some shoots, the asparagus and other uh, stem part of the, the plant body, we are using as a vegetables. And root portion also we are consuming as a vegetables, uh, uh, carrot, uh, uh, potato, and etc. beetroot. And uh, if you see that, what we get from the food, uh, the food majorly comes from the plant. I suppose we know that. And what kind of uh, doctor? Coming? Doctor, yeah. uh, uh, you allow the participants. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I have allowed. So the majority of the, the the food which we consume, the chemically made up of, they are the. Uh, 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 nutritional aspects we consider as a mi macronutrients, micronutrients, phytonutrients. What are the macronutrients? If you see that uh, the major chemical constituents that the macro uh, nutrients are the macro uh, molecules which we have in our body as well as in the plant body, they are the carbohydrate guys, proteins, amino acids, lipids and fats, and uh, nucleic acids. Since we are not going to touch today that the nucleic acids, and we are going to elaborate about the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. In addition to that, the, the uh, micronutrients, they are the vitamins, trace minerals. They are very important for the human metabolism. And phytonutrients, today everybody is just talking about that the phytonutrients, they are the secondary metabolites. It protects you. Uh, uh, it has the versatile uh, molecules. Also, it protects very nicely in the human especially right now the kabasara kudinir which is being circulated all over the Kamal Nadu 
which we assume that it's a discontinuant that antiviral property we are suppose what are they what are the phytonutrients the south this we are going to little bit we are touching upon uh today lecture and if you see that the micronutrients that the first the macronutrients the first guy is the carbohydrate the carbohydrate in general for the benefit of the the students community the carbohydrate can be classified into three major classes uh, depending on the uh, size the monosaccharides uh, uh, in uh, that the monosaccharides are glucose fructose galactose galose mannose glucose and etc etc and the disaccharides what every day we are consuming as a milk lactose and uh, we are consuming as a boost bone vita for legs they are also disaccharide they can find maltose and uh, uh, table sugar uh, nothing but the sucrose non reducing disaccharide and in addition to that the rice which we consume and which we are consuming as a potato uh, that which we are consuming as a the chapati all is chemically made up of starch that the starch the south that the uh, straight chain amylose and branching or amylopectin this are all is a major source of the seeds and vegetables and the fruits which we are consuming that the carbohydrate once the carbohydrate it's a taken up in our system and in our system we call the digestive system the di digestive system does uh, the saliva that the first we are eating and once it is eating that the buccal cavity is it's a you know the mechanical chopping is takes place and once the mechanical chopping is takes place sorry once the mute all mute all once the mechanical chopping then it starts you know that the mixing of uh, salivary amylases and the salivary amylases major role to chop the glycosidic linkages which is present in the carbohydrate once it reaches the food uh, by into the mm. as a bolus uh, mm. uh, as a bolus it reaches to the stomach there the stomach the, the stomach enzymes pepsin and pepsin can activate and produce uh, and uh, chops the amino acids and proteins and releases as amino acid also it further degraded uh, into that the small intestine and then that the glucose that the whatever it may be that the disaccharide or the starch polysaccharide which can be degraded into the uh, monomeric or oligomeric or dimeric this can enter into blood stream with the help of insulin and it takes up and once the glucose is uh, released into the uh, intestine and are taken into the stream mainstream and from the mainstream with the help of the insulin it entered into the cells and cell cells start degrade and to provide the energy through which energy that the chemical energy is converted into mechanical energy to do any kind of work if suppose if you are blinking your eyes one time it required around 12 atps once if you want to just raise your hand in the you know the hub it required more than 1000 atps are required so this is the carbohydrate if you see that the carbohydrate once the glucose entered into the cell whether it may be a plant cell or it may be animal cell or it may be a, a other fungal cell or etc etc dear participant mute yourself please kindly mute yourself so once it is uh, entered into the cell the further degradation that is the glucose converted into pyruvic acid through the glycolysis it is occurs in the cytosol once the glycolysis uh, end of the glycolysis you will have the pyruvic acid the pyruvic acid can converted into acetyl coa with the with the help of the multi complex enzyme uh, the that is the uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme it required lot of vitamins especially thiamine i will come back while discussing with the vitamins thiamine folic acid and these are all the different vitamins are required to activate pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme to convert pyruvic acid into acetyl coa this acetyl coa can enter inside the mitochondria and the mitochondria which are, which is already there in the four carbon compound oxaloacetic acid and this oxaloacetic acid can binds with the two carbon compound of acetyl coa 
can enter into PCA cycle. And once after PCA cycle, you will release the, that the, your system, the mitochondria can release this lot of high energy compounds. This high energy compounds can be captured through which chemiosmotic coupling theory that they entered into electron transport system through which we are getting that the ATP. This ATP is the major molecule to do any kind of work. We call it as energy currency. What we are, if you want to buy any material from the shop, you are paying the money. Likewise, if you want to do any job, you ought to pay that ATP, then only your system can activate it and to do the mechanical job. This is what in general the carbohydrate can do for us after taking that the food. So uh, if you see that the sum of uh, soluble fibers, dietary fibers, which plays a major role in our system for, you know, the soluble or viscous fibers, uh, which helps for industrial microflora re-establishment or to maintain the microflora. This microflora, which is very, very important for us to maintain the digestion and good health. And if you see that, uh, that the oats, that uh, bindi, okra, or the lady's finger, we call it as, it contains lot, and legume seeds, it contains good source of soluble fibers. This fibers include gums, pectins, and mucilages. This is mucus-like substances, which helps for the function in intestine. The inulin, that the, another one which we have shown here is the inulin. This inulin is rich in, they are otherwise called chemically polyfructans. That is a, a, a fructose. Fructose or fructose. That the polyfructose molecule is called as inulin, which is available in uh, dandelions, artichokes, onions, and garlic. They, they are all rich, rich source of inulin. They are considered as a soluble fibers. If, if you see that the non-soluble fibers, that the water, uh, you cannot solubilize these fibers, that the fiber this, this carbohydrates, this carbohydrate cannot solubilize in water. They are called as non-soluble carbohydrates. This many insoluble dietary fibers are inert. And if you see that insoluble fibers, they are including the cellulose, which we are consuming every day, lignin. They may help with their, uh, you, you know, the satisfaction. Uh, yes, I, I, I have, my food is very good. I am very happy. This kind of... Uh, Satiation can be given by that the insoluble fibers. And then if you see that the some uh, molecules, they are the, you know, that uh, natural uh, sweetness, uh, which is having the low calories additives. If you see the stevia, the stevia is that the, the glucose molecules can combine with uh, secondary metabolites. I will come back. What are the secondary metabolites? Once it is combined with the secondary metabolites, if you see that uh, dicharpin, glycosides, steviocyte, uh, which is contained in the stevia, and also tricharpin, glycosides, hogrosides. Pachepan, mute all. Pachepan, yeah. mute all. Mute all. Yes, I have muted. Oh, okay, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you see that the next guy is the lipid, the, uh, the lipids are hydrocarbons, energy-rich molecules, as compared to the carbohydrate, the lipids are, it's, it's we call it, we generally compare uh, that the carbohydrates are, uh, you know, like saving account that the lipids are fixed deposit, saving deposit, uh, the bank, what the account we have, the lipids are fixed deposit. So it's a bulky molecule, high energy molecules, the, uh, which we have every day we consume. It's from the oils and lipids. And uh, uh, even we are taking that the milk from that the milk, you have the lipid and you have that of, uh, egg, that's contained of uh, the lipids and fatty acids. Also the meat that's contained a lot of uh, lipids and fatty acids. In general, if you see that the physical property of the lipids, the saturated fatty acids under room temperature, they are in the solid. But unsaturated fatty acids, lipids and oils under ambient temperature, the ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius in, in, in India. 
uh, uh, that uh, unsaturated fatty acids existed as a liquid form. So this is a saturated and unsaturated fatty acid. What is general saturated and unsaturated? The saturated fatty acid, the fatty acid, if you see that structurally, one side, it's a hydrocarbon, one side is the carboxylic end, another side is a methyl end. Methyl end is the hydrophobic nature, the carboxylic terminus is the hydrophilic in nature. That's why it's an amphipathic molecule or dipole molecule. The membrane, if you see that, the, bi, that the bilipid membrane, one side a uh, water repelling guy, another side is a water loving guy. That's why if you pour on water on your surface, that the water, uh, that the, whatever that they expose to your chemical or water, which cannot be entered inside directly, because of this nature of the lipid, it's a lipid bilayer in the membrane structure. So the saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acid is nothing but the, the hydrocarbons, it does have in between uh, the two carbon is the double bond. They call it as unsaturated fatty acid. If it doesn't have that uh, double bond, they are called it as sat uh, that, uh, saturated fatty acid. If you see that the saturated fatty acid every day, the palm oil, Palmitic acid, they are the saturated fatty acid. Butter, saturated fatty acid. Sometimes the saturated fatty acid is failed to digest in our system. The people who were eating that the pups which can make vanaspati or the palm oil, it fails to digest and keep on regurgitated in our digestive tract. And once after, sometimes it gets vomited. So this is because of the failure for digestion of the, the saturated fatty acid in your system. But while coming to the unsaturated fatty acid, if suppose if it is having the only one double bond inside the fatty acid, they are called it as mono unsaturated fatty acids. If it is more than one saturated, that the double bond which is present in the hydrocarbons of the fatty acid, they are called it as poly unsaturated fatty acid, pupa. So this pupa, that the mupa is mainly contained the olive oil, canola, and polyunsaturated fatty acids are rich in sunflower oil and soybean oil. And saturated fatty acids, meat and butter fat, also that the, the people, the poor people who are consuming, that the government of Tamil Nadu is freely providing that the oil, which comes from the palm tree, that is a palm oil, this palm oil, palmitic acid, they are the saturated fatty acids. Sometimes the people in the bottom level they can able to digest because they, re they require a lot of energy while because their job is, you know, very hard working. So for them, it may be a good for digestion. For the people who over is, you know, that the less physical activities, they are, they are not advisable to consume that uh, the saturated fatty acid frequently. So if you see that the polyunsaturated fatty acids are, you know, that the, uh, 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 if you hydrogenated hydrogen gas is filled into that, you can make a trans fat. That trans fat is very essential for the food processing industries. And if you see that, the, you know that the, the trans fat trans fats can be less expensive to produce than other solid fats and easily get digested. If you see that that the aldehyde acid is a trans fat and oleic acid, which is comes from that the olive olive trees and olive seeds, they are the cis fats. So if you see that this, uh, uh, you can supplement this kind of uh, uh, molecules, uh, the omega-3 fatty acids, I will come back to what is omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Just a minute. So if you see that, uh, Trans fat have higher melting temperature than cis fat. So omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are very special molecules. Uh, in our system, uh, uh, there are different types of fatty acids. They are, they are classifying into different, depending on the number of hydrocarbons. If it is uh, less than six hydrocarbons, they are uh, short chain fatty acids, medium chain fatty acids, long chain fatty acids. So depending on the synthesis, whether your system, human system able to 
synthesize the, uh, the fatty acids or not. Depending on that, you can classify into two categories. One is essential fatty acid, non-essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids, our system cannot digest the fatty acid. They are considered as essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids are three types. They are called as linolenic acid, linoleic acid, arachidonic acid. Linolenic and linoleic acid, they are the major source comes from the uh, 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 seed oil. And arachidonic acid is nothing but the oil which we are extracting from the groundnut, peanut. Peanut oil is otherwise called arachidonic acid. This 24 uh, hydrocarbons, it does contain that the omega-6 fatty acids, what we call it as omega-3 fatty acids, rich in fish oil. But instead of fish, that the non-vegetarian people can supplement that the omega-3 fatty acid consuming of fish, but vegetarian people can supplement this omega-3 fatty acid and omega-6 fatty acids from the seeds, seed oil. So uh, if you see that the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, alpha linoleic acid, ALA, and then LA, linoleic acid, and arachidonic acid, the three are of uh, essential fatty acids, which cannot be synthesized in our human body. And from the alpha, ALA can be converted into icosopentanoic acid, EPA, and then uh, doco, docoso exonoic acid, DHA. These are all the omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids are the linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. These two are omega-6. And what, what exactly the omega? Omega is nothing but the numbering of the carbon, carbon number. If it is starts from carboxylic terminus, they are called as alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon carbons. Alpha carbon and beta carbon. Once the food is entered the, as a fatty acid, if you are consuming in your diet, beta oxidation is very essential for providing high energy molecules through which acetyl-CoA is getting generated and through which the acetyl-CoA, you will get synthesized the cholesterol. The, the cholesterol is a precursor molecule for synthesis of steroidal hormone. Steroidal hormone is the the major regulatory molecules for whether it, you are you are becoming a male or you are becoming a female. So this the if you consider the naming of the carbon, if it starts from carboxylic terminus, you can give the name alpha carbon, beta carbon. Likewise, if you consider the number of carbon, it is starts from methyl CH3 end of fatty acid. We, you can consider the first carbon, methyl carbon, is a omega-1, second carbon, omega-2, omega-3. Like, if it is a carbon that's contained the double bond in the omega-3, we call it as omega-3 fatty acid. If the carbon, the sixth carbon starts from methyl N, if that's contained the double bond, we call it as omega-6 fatty acid. Likewise, omega-9 fatty acid, omega-12 fatty acid, likewise, you can consider. So what is the important for omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids? They are the very, very important for the human health. So the high ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids may promote good health of human being. If you consume that the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids from your diet, linoleic acid, alpha linolenic acid, they are converted into eicosanoids. This cyclosanides can be act as a pro-inflammatory molecules in our body. Also, the dicosanides, they are the signaling molecules. They have the different functions and they consider as anti-inflammatory molecules for our system. So dietary omega-3 fatty acids can protect against chronic diseases. I will come back. What are the chronic diseases? Alpha linoleic acid can be converted into EPA. This EPA can convert it into DHA. The EPA and DHA are very rich in fish. And if you consider alpha linoic acid con consumed from the seeds, azelnuts, and etc., etc., oils, they contain alpha linoic acid, but doesn't require for fish. So alpha linoic acid can convert it into EPA that is equal to fish oil. So dietary free, uh, that the omega 3 fatty acid can protect against chronic diseases. And next to the, uh, up to now, we have discussed the macronutrients. Next to that, the micronutrients. The micronutrients are vitamins 
and essential small molecules vitamin a we consume carotenoids carotenoids rich in uh, rich in carrots this is the directly it's a uh, the precursor molecule for synthesis of retinoic acid or directly can act as a retinoic acid they are considered as a vitamin a and then vitamin c ascorbic acid right now the covid 19 that the doctors are asking us to supplement lot of vitamin c ascorbic acid that ascorbic acid rich in citrus fruits and then uh, if you see that the vitamin b9 folic acid uh, that the b9 is uh, you know that the very essential for synthesis of uh, uh, dna especially the purine purine biosynthesis the vitamin b9 folic acid is a precursor molecule for biosynthesis of uh, primate purines so if you want that the cells get synthesized very fast cell division the normal the the childs the babies if they want to grow very nicely the folic acid that's why the pregnant women are asked administered to consume folic acid the reason behind for consumption of the folic acid is to cell divide so the baby can grow very nicely inside the uh, uh, placenta and then cell division may fasten the folic acid can 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 be the precursor molecule for biosynthesis of uh, 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 purine so the purine is the one of the uh, one of the major molecule which contribute the dna and rna so the dna rna is the yes phase of the cell division so through which the cell division very nicely can takes place without any problem so if you see that the vitamin uh, b1 thiamine and vitamin b6 so if you see that the vitamin b1 are essential for uh, carbohydrate metabolism in the carbohydrate metabolism i told you the pyruvate dehydrogenase the multi enzyme complex the cofactor vitamin a is the very important as a thiamine pyrophosphate the first enzyme the vitamin b1 is a thiamine pyrophosphate once if it is supplemented thiamine pyrophosphate then only the pyruvate dehydrogenase can activate and convert the pyruvic acid into acetyl coa then only the acetyl coa can enter into my, mitochondria and tca cycle can proceed it and through which the tca cycle you will get atp if it is fails the supplementation of the vitamin a that the vitamin b1 thiamine time in pyrophosphate then fails for generation of atp why because there is inactivation of pyruvate dehydrogenase even your system very nicely can activate the glycolysis pathway but the glycolysis end product pyruvic acid cannot enter into the tca cycle that's why that the generation of atp fails because of the vitamin b1 lack so likewise there are different vitamins are very very essential and if you see that the vitamin d we can synthesize the vitamin d from that uh, if you expose to sunlight and vitamin e tocopherol it's a anti uh, that uh, very very important for fertility to decide whether it is a fertile or you know sterile this can be decided by vitamin uh, e vitamin k that uh, you can get it from the leafy vegetables and oils it's very essential for blood clotting vitamin k also will plays a major role in the antioxidant scavenging machinery in our system and several dietary minerals are also essential for human health the potassium which we are if you consume banana you will get lot of potassium this potassium can activate the sodium potassium channels for osmotic balance and to activate the you know that the cell function and physiological role of that every cells in our body especially the smooth muscles contractions sodium potassium channels are very very essential and calcium is a secondary messenger in our body to activate signaling that the
ஹலோ குமரன் ஹலோ எஸ் பச்சிபா நவ ஓகே சாரி ஃபார் மை இன்டர்நெட் நவ யூ கேன் ஷேர் தி ஸ்கிரீன் எஸ் 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 ஹலோ பச்சிபா எஸ் 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 சோ செவரல் டைட்ரி மினரல்ஸ் இஃப் யூ ஷேர் தி ஸ்கிரீன் பச்சிபா ஐ ஹேவ் எஸ் எஸ் ஐ ஹேவ் ஷேர்ட் can you can you see kumaran uh, no no your your uh, screen is not okay 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 not okay okay not visible your screen okay sure 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 so ah uh, now okay yeah so uh, the selenium are very very important especially that the thyroid regulation uh, that the majority of the people in india they are fails for the you know thyroid uh, regulation and etc etc so for that selenium is very important uh, uh, the next is the iron uh, the iron is a you know major chelating molecule for the hemoglobin heme so for that uh, for iron is very important we are getting that the iron is the leafy greens especially the murunga moringa uh, olifera or moringa whatever we call it as uh, the moringa leaves and beans are a rich source of iron and if you the mineral nutrients depends on the soil composition where we are adopting or where that the leafy vegetables and fruits we are consuming or uh, harvesting so the soil textures plays a major role for just a minute uh, kumaran just a minute okay okay but the people sir somebody waiting yeah yes yes maybe I'll, you can uh, you you only admit it because you... okay 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 i have admitted all so the whatever that the that the soil texture that's why that the some people are climbing uh, the the vegetables which we am i am consuming in chennai and the vegetable which i am consuming in uh, uh, namakkal uh, that the taste are differing the reason is the vegetable comes from chennai is a different soil uh, uh, you know the grown and the vegetable which is available in namakkal the different soil texture so the assimilation of the dust of the plants minerals different minerals it's depending on the soil nature from that the soil if the fertile soil the fertile soil is there that the good amount of uh, so the good amount of uh, minerals can be enriched or assimilated in the food grains and vegetables and then which can, if you are consuming then it's it can be considered as a balanced food so if you see that the bio availability of some minerals interfere with their assimilation selenium if it is a selenium is acid is the you know mineral if it is a complex nature organic molecule if it can very nicely uptaken by your system and it uh, entered into your body and then which activates very good physiological functions of our body one minute so uh, if it is a selenium ion itself it it is not you know the selenium uptaken into the gut is enhanced when it is a organic form 
if it is a free uh, form of selenium which cannot be uptaken our system the same way non heme ions comes from the plant is not assimilated as readily as heme ion from the meat um, uh, meat also the millets the, the right now that the millets kambu bajra they are enriched with the uh, uh, heme magnesium ions so once it, that the organic forms it's a complex nature once it is consumed which can be very nicely uptaken in our system <clears throat> also the phytate is abundant in the seeds it is negative charge which can be very nicely binds with the positive molecules and which can be very nicely assimilated and entered in our system so the next category is the phytonutrients what is phytonutrients the phytonutrients is nothing but they are the secondary metabolites the secondary metabolites we call it as phytonutrients the phytonutrients are synthesized into the primary metabolites i just brief what are the primary metabolites primary metabolites are the four categories the carbohydrate fatty acids lipids and fatty acids and uh, amino acids and proteins and in addition to that nucleic acid these are all the four primary metabolites in the primary metabolites the carbohydrate fatty acids and nitrogen from that through the photosynthesis the carbohydrate gets synthesized from the carbohydrate the carbohydrate can be converted into fatty acids also the carbohydrate can be converted into nitrogen metabolism through which that uh, the, through the nitrogen metabolism they are getting synthesized the proteins and this protein can be converted into fatty acid also the fatty acid can be converted into nitrogen the fatty acid also converted into carbohydrate these are all the interlinked uh, metabolic pathway in this the other secondary metabolites can be synthesized for the physiological functions including the defense mechanism of the plants which can be produced a small molecule this small molecules can be considered as a secondary metabolites this secondary metabolites plays a major role in the human body that's why we call it as phytonutrients what are they tannins coumarin uh, quinones flavonoids phytoketides terpenoids alkaloids cyanogenic glycosides and if you see the major categories of the phytonutrients we you know the general category for phytochemicals carotenoids phenols alkaloids nitrogen containing compounds organosulfur compounds if you see that the carotenoids beta carotene alpha carotene lutein zeaxanthin astaxanthin lycopenes the tomato the uh, red color they are because of lycopenes the carrot it's uh, completely the carotenoids and if you see the phenolics phenolics can be again classified into phenolic acid flavonoids stibans coumarins tannins so this phenolic acid can be converted uh, again classified into hydroxy benzoic acid and then hydroxy cinnamic acid uh, the hydro hydroxy benzoic acid can be again classified into gallic acid phytocatechic acid vanillic acid uh, the va vanilla flavor Uh, ice cream which we are consuming as a vanilla flavor they are all phenolic acid hydroxy benzoic acid hydroxy cinnamic acid para coumaric acid caphylic ca acid ferulic acid and uh, cinnabic acid and if, if you see the flavonoids coming under the phenols the next category flavonols flavones the flavonols quercetin camphorol mercetin and if you see the flavones apigenin crisin luteolin i will come back the apigenin crisin luteolin they are all is the major anti viral drugs the chicken gunia uh, you know that uh, uh, earlier we consumed that the three different plant material that the papaya stem and then uh, you know that uh, the the uh, the precaution of three herbal they are they are rich of uh, uh, apigenin flavonoids uh, flavones
Hello. Chepan. Hello. Doctor? Ah, okay, okay, uh, Bachi. Uh, sorry. Uh, ah, okay, no, no problem, no problem. Okay. So, uh, the flavonoids, flavonoids, Anthocyanidin, isoflavonides, isoflavonide, genistrin, and diatsin, they are the equivalent molecules for uh, estrogenic uh, uh, regulators. So, if you see that again, organosulfur compounds, isothiocyanides, indolyls, allyl sulfur compounds. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll look into that one by one. Phytonutrients are flavonoids and anthocyanins, related compounds. If you look at a chain and catechic acid, what we are consuming as a green tea, uh, the green tea uh, uh, may help to eliminate, uh, uh, may help to eliminate mortality from the, some cancer cells. Genistrin, they are the uh, uh, isoflavonoid compounds rich in soybean. So uh, let me tell you one story. In uh, I know that the 2000 before 2000, uh, uh, the Moon Meal of government of Tamil Nadu, uh, they have administered that the soya bean, soya uh, instead of the legume, uh, the, the tur dal, So that the government, uh, government of Tamil Nadu, uh, the, the cheapest rate that the soya, uh, soya bean uh, 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 can be supplemented in in terms of uh, Kurdal. Mute, uh, Pachman, mute, mute somebody is uh, on uh, yes. So, uh, the, you know, that the purely puberty, that the girl child uh, uh, before 10, 10 uh, you know, that at the age of before 10, they are reaching the puberty. It's mainly because of the isoflavonide, uh, you know, soya sauce, soya uh, meat, or soya, uh, whatever that the soya uh, product. Which, which is being, uh, uh, you know, administered to the uh, young child, the female child, they may reach very fast of puberty. The reason is the genistin molecule, which can go and binds with the endocrine system of the, the young baby, uh, and it regulate the ovulation process that they can be equivalent to estrogenic molecule. That's why it's uh, not advisable to consume the soya product to the young uh, female uh, childs. So just we, we must be aware for that the genistin molecule, which is uh, very high in the soya, and quercetin, that the majority of the plant molecule does contain the quercetin, and then cyanogenic glycosides, the reddish colored grapes, does contain a lot of cyanogenic glycosides, cyanodin glycosides, and aspiritin. They are the uh, Flavonone, it's found in citrus fruits and curcumin. Of course, we know that uh, the, the turmeric does contain the curcumin. Everybody's, uh, they are talking about in America, uh, the curcumin powder and curcumin tablet and curcumin capsule and et cetera, et cetera. The reason behind is 
it's a very good antioxidant capacity also it's a very good anti viral property because of that the curcumin plays a major role for the food and health sector and it does contain the curcumin and another guy is a carotenoid the carotenoid yes of course that the teacher who teaches the biosynthesis of gibberellic uh, uh, acid and uh, also cytokinin the geranyl geranyl pyrophosphate or geranyl geranyl diphosphate is a precursor molecule for biosynthesis of uh, you know gibberellic acid uh, through huh? which that pathway phyt phytone is getting synthesized that the carotenoids are uh, are just you know that uh, vitamin a precursor which is there in the you know that the carrot also in the lycopene the lycopene also can be considered as a carotenoid the lycopene which is rich uh, they are the you know the the you know, the fruit um, the tomato that's contain the lot of lycopenes lutein uh, also rich in uh, maize corn and if you see the biosynthetic pathway of this particular molecule of lutein also that the lycopene it starts from geranyl geranyl uh, pyrophosphate and geranyl geranyl diphosphate from that uh, phytin and carotenoid gets synthesized from the carotenoid lycopene gets synthesized from the lycopene you will get synthesized lutein also the beta carotene xylazanthin zeaxanthin neoxanthin is getting synthesized in the cytosol of the plant cell from that geranyl that the neoxanthin and xylazanthin get out from the uh, cytosol in, entered into the chloroplast from there it gets synthesized the gibberellic acid and to which that the beta carotene it gets supplemented that the beta carotene is converted into vitamin a after ingestion uh, in our body and the carotenoid may help for preventing the age related uh, uh, macular degeneration that is uh, the eye related uh, you know diseases and uh, the next guy is uh, allyl sulfides and isothiocyanates they are the very good antiviral molecules that's why that the people are asking us to consume a lot of uh, to fight against covid 19 the onion garlic they are rich of uh, you know that the allyl sulfides with anti cancer as well as anti viral property the structure of diallyl sulfide is this shown here it contain you know this this kind of molecule is rich in onion and garlic but if you see that the right hand side of ours it's a broccoli and cabbage this contain sulforaphane sulforaphane is nothing but the, it's a proven it's a pharmacologically proved by several scientists that sulforaphane is uh, it's a, you know that uh, anti cancer molecules this contain lot of broccoli and cabbage even cauliflower the isothiocyanates such as sulforaphane are derived from cruciferous vegetables including the radish muli mulangi uh, all cruciferous member does contain this kind of isothiocyanate they have potential anti cancer activity also they have anti viral property so uh, next to that if, uh, the, the gut flora what's gut flora the gut flora is nothing but uh, it starts from mouth to um, uh, you know uh, colon there are millions and millions of bacteria get established in our digestive tract this digestive tract which helps for in, uh, in our body that the bacteria which helps for digestion ingestion uh, without that uh, you know that the people who consumes antibiotics after consumption of antibiotic majority of the microflora the beneficial microflora which is colonized or which is established in our digestive tract which can get vanished so due to that the people will suffer a lot for absorption and digestion that's why immediately after consumption of antibiotics immediately we have to take probiotics especially the curd yogurt and curd which re establish your microflora this is the reason behind the people who consume lot of antibiotics later immediately it can be consumed the yogurt or uh, probiotics to re establish so once after re establishment of this will helps that good uh, uh, digestion and good absorption so if it is the gut microbes will directly affect the type 2 diabetics also if you see that the healthy control and patients the gut microbes flora 
or an indicator of contributor to well-being. If you are good, the you need a lot of uh, good microflora get established in your microbiota, the digestive tract. If you are the patient, a poor microbiota will be there. Type two diabetic condition is like that. So uh, even the, the the food which we consume knowingly or unknowingly, no, uh, the soybean, if you consume, it contains the, the molecule phytonutrient equal. The name no, of the molecule is the equal. Is produced from the soybean. It no, contains the you know that uh, it it helps for establishment of gut flora. Re-establish the gut flora in our intestine. So this is otherwise we call it as the quorum sensing. I will come back and uh, a little bit I will discuss about the quorum sensing. The quorum sensing is nothing but the single bacteria is there. From that bacteria, it communicate another bacteria for reproduction. So there are the bacterial reproduction are different types. Uh, you know, asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction, especially the sexual reproduction, uh, the positive strain can produces the chemical signal to attract negative strain. Also, the vice versa. This chemical signaling molecule is communication is otherwise called quorum sensing. The equal is the molecule which helps for uh, you know re-establishment to communicate the bacteria. And to help for sexual reproduction of the bacteria to re-establish the gut microbiota in our body. So the so have been uh, will help for re-establishment. This is what general what I have discussed. So for the through the photosynthesis, the food is get synthesized either in the form of vegetables, fruits, or in the seeds. We are harvesting and we are processing the food. We are consuming and once after consume through the mouth, it's a maceration is takes place. And from the alpha amylase, it stops the carbohydrate into smaller molecules, oligomers, polymer, that the polymer become that the oligomers and dimer and monomer through which that the stomach can enter and uh, further digestion is takes place. The polymers become the monomer. The monomer can enter inside the bloodstream uh, that the lipase, that the lipid molecule also get chopped and then it, uh, it uh, triazyl glycerates can be chopped into fatty acid, the long chain fatty acid can again chopped into medium chain or small chain fatty acid through alpha oxidation and beta oxidation and which can be converted into acetyl CoA. This acetyl CoA can enter inside the cell in terms of different forms and then it entered into bloodstream and it get assimilated in the blood and through which the blood whether can be in which organ that the central metabolic organ of our body is the liver. Liver will plays a major role for the carbohydrate and protein metabolism for a leakage in which tissue of your organ or uh, organal tissues or which part of body is required for this particular amount of chemicals, nutrients and etc. etc. through which the feedback and homeostasis this mechanism get maintained. This is what the, the plant will help for, you know, the the uh, nutritional aspects and good health. And then the next two, uh, you know, phytonutrients, little bit I'm going to touch about the medicinal plants aspects and uh, three structural classes of uh, metabolites. They are called as secondary metabolites or phytonutrients. The nutritional aspects, if you are talking about phytonutrients, they are the secondary metabolites. The secondary metabolites are synthesized from the primary metabolites. The primary metabolites are carbohydrate, proteins and amino acid metabolism, lipids and fatty acid metabolism, through which the small molecules are get synthesized. This, the carbohydrate, proteins, fatty acids and lipids and nucleic acid, they call it as macro molecules. They, this, the small molecules can be considered as a micro or small molecules. That's why the plant secondary metabolites can be considered as a small molecules. This small molecules can be classified into three major categories. They are the flavonoids, uh, you know, the phenolic compounds, alkaloids, terpenoids. Based on the structure, the earlier which I have discussed based on the phytonutrients, this classification is based on the structural basis. The Based on the structural basis uh, classification, phenols, alkaloids, terpenoids. If you see that the phenols, uh, phenolic compounds, glycosinolates, tannins, homarins, quinones, and flavonoids. These are all the, you know, that the phenols. 
and terpenoids if you see again flavonoids polyketides terpenes and then if you see the alkaloids glycosinides cyanogenic glycosides and alkaloids these are all the three structural classes little bit one by one we'll discuss so the first category is alkaloids the alkaloids are biosynthetic uh, biosynthetically uh, from the plant point of view diverse groups they are the tropane alkaloids including cocaine i will come back what is the cocaine and then uh, benzyl isoquinoline alkaloid bias including morphines they are the you know the narcotic compounds uh, cocaines morphines and caffeine also narcotic it's a purine based alkaloids and uh, cinnicionin uh, perolizidin alkaloids monoterpenoid indole alkaloids and monoterpenoid alkaloids mias are derived from streptocidin a uh, majority of the scientists who are listening right now from the cas in botany they know a little bit about the, the campesin taxol and etc etc these are all the uh, monoterpenoid indole alkaloids if you see that that the synthesis of this monoterpene alkaloids it starts from tryptophan tryptophan is the amino acid from the amino acid that's a precursor molecule for biosynthesis of this mias it starts from tryptamin and cyclohexanin from there ajmalin vin blastin vincristin campathisin reserpine taxol ajmalacin quinones these are all is coming under monoterpenoid indole alkaloids it's getting synthesized in the plant they are all anti cancer molecules so uh, taxol major anti cancer molecules they are the combination of that the chemotherapy is nothing but the the monoterpenoid alkaloids is a combination of mias different types of uh, mias including campathisin resveratrol vinblastin vincristin taxol all combination they are using to administer as a chemotherapeutic compounds in addition to antibiotics this alkaloids is mixed and administered to the cancer patient they call it as chemotherapy so mias are mainly known from the two plants that is a indian snake goa snake root and sarbakanda that is a sarbakanda is nothing but vitania somnifera amukuran kelangu and then the sudugattu malli catranthus roseus sudugattu malli or uh, you know nitya kalyani or etc etc so the, it comes the vin 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 blastin and vin cristin they are all uh, considered as a monoterpenoid indole alkaloids so the next guy bias benzyl isoquinone alkaloids the right now that the benetrial cup syrup nascopin is the major compound this major nascopin is nothing but the benzyl isoquinone alkaloid is extracted from papaver somnifer cup suppressant molecule so these are all the different morphin and uh, you know that uh, apopin uh, cholin pavin isopavin and these are all is a group of benzyl isoquinones alkaloids the next alkaloid is a nitrogen uh, compound containing alkaloids they are all is narcotic compounds cocaine is a narcotic compound it's a nitrogen containing alkaloids coca coca uh, that is the, 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 the cake which we consume coca based cake and uh, the catranthus roseus vincristin morphine caffeine and uh, morphine is comes from the papaver somnifer poppy nicotine nicotine is a uh, you know that the smoke uh, that the uh, nicotiana tabacum pohele and they are the uh, nitrogen containing alkaloid and terpenoid the next group is the terpenoid uh, right now that this, uh, there are a lot of papers have appeared in the different web uh, websites uh, the eucalyptol fernasol this are all that, that the molecule which very nicely inactivate the spike protein of covid 19 that is a, a sars cov 2 uh, 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 the uh, virus which can cause the disease worldwide right now epidemics pandemic and eucalyptol will have the very nice you know that the bioinformatics studies have reported eucalyptol linalool 
carnosol these are all the different terpenoids will have very strong affinity and to uh, neutralize the spike protein of cov2 so eucalyptol is nothing but uh, it's the oil which comes from the eucalyptus uh, tree and pinin uh, isoprin limonin pernazol these are all the different types of uh, terpenoids and uh, again the another one the worldwide that the three years back that chinese scientists got nobel prize because of the of uh, the worldwide there is a only one drug for controlling the malaria that anti malarial drugs is the artemisinin so just only one chemical shift she yeah. has made the chinese uh, women the chinese chinese scientists who made the little bit shift from the artemisinin the natural artemisinin compound it's a powerful than the natural artemisinin and because of that she got nobel prize in 3 years back and this this compound is comes from the artemisia annua is otherwise called davanam or the local name there are different types of local name uh, they are the only potential drugs it's available worldwide to control the uh, malarial and also that can uh, ganja tetrahydrocannabinoids it comes from ganja uh, weed plants uh, texol texas brevicalis again the terpenoid they are classifying here as well and jingo biloba and then ginseng uh, 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 ginsenoids ginsenosides these are all the revitol tablets rejuvenation or antioxidant to activate the body uh, that a lot of uh, Uh, you know pharmacological activities have been proved by this different types of compounds texol is the again the anti viral comp uh, the anti cancer compounds uh, you know that uh, chemotherapeutic uh, the one of the major uh, uh, constituents in the chemotherapeutic drug is the texol and the phenolic compounds if you see again uh, i'm just repeating here uh, all the toothpaste without eugenol a uh, clove Uh, sisygenium aromaticum clove without eugenol there won't be any toothpaste so this toothpaste <coughs> major anti bacterial effect anti biofilm effect eugenol we have proved that eugenol is a quorum sensing inhibitor so this quorum sensing inhibitor molecule can be used in any kind of toothpaste once if you take and smell it you can have the clove smell genistein isoflavonoid tannins uh, unripe fruit, fruits if you chew some sour taste they are rich of tannins epigallocatechin curcumin and etc etc they are all phenolic compounds and most most plant phenols are products of phenyl propanoid met metabolism so the phenyl propanoid is nothing but the precursor molecule of amino acid is the phenyl alanine to synthesize the phenolic compounds the phenyl alanine is the precursor molecule to provide the blue color uh, this particular portion of any uh, uh, phenolic compounds it comes from phenylalanine quercetin and the bottom gingerol gingiver aficinol is in the ginger and white is vinifera cyanidin glycosides they are all most phenolic compounds and with that uh, uh, you know these are all the nutrients phytonutrients and food and diets so this food and diet how the food and diet will affect the human health dietary deficiency lead to disability and death uh, the diets uh, the diet is a factor in some chronic diseases like metabolic syndrome type 2 diabetes cardiovascular diseases and cancer and if you see that the more than 1 billion people worldwide they are all affected uh, due to the lack of food that is uh, hungry and more than 2 billion uh, people Uh, you know mal nutrition without having the adequate vitamins and minerals what they are consuming in their food they lack of this vitamins and minerals and children are mainly the vulnerable to the dietary deficiency if suppose the crop failures or the availability bioaccumulation of that particular minerals or that phytonutrients uh, the people leads to you know the famines and it uh, because of the war because of the pandemic uh, right now that the uh, the people who migrated from one place to another place lack of food uh, conflict corruptions can interfere with the food distribution 
poverty contribute to chronic malnutrition all over the world and uh, vitamin a deficiency is leading to cause of blindness if you see in the uh, uh, 100 million children so are lack of uh, vitamin a and in india is uh, considered as a clinical vitamin a deficiency that the vitamin uh, the occurrence of vitamin a deficiency is uh, very very high in the india they are considered categorized as a clinical level and many people are suffer deficiency of other vitamins and minerals pellagra is supposed we know that vitamin b3 niacin lack of that pellagra is very common in the women and uh, people uh, nutritional rickets uh, uh, is the condition in which that the bones are too soft and the cleft like formation it's due to the vitamin d deficiency and scurvy and because of the you know vitamin c deficiency anemic condition because of the vitamin uh, that uh, iron deficiency and this are all that uh, uh, the, you know that the dietary deficiency are not only in india all over the developed countries also they have this kind of problems uh, the you know the zinc deficiency calcium vitamins iron and etc etc uh, it's not only that the india developing or underdeveloped or poor nations they are not only that they affected by uh, dietary of uh, deficiency also the developed countries also the facing lot of problems then uh, uh, if you see that uh, dietary deficiency half of the people on the planet are uh, suffering and women and children uh, uh, and the poor are disproportionately affected mainly affected the uh, populations are women and children food enrichment uh, fortification bio fortification program can help for this uh, dietary deficiency in parallel efforts that uh, you know the variety can be developed and also the food can be affordable and easily available to the people consumers and the next is the chronic diseases if you see that the leading cause of death in the worldwide the chronic diseases in which include the cardiovascular diseases cancer diabetic and respiratory diseases these are all the chronic diseases globally that the chronic disease kill more than twice as many people as infected disease including hiv aids so the chronic cancer cardiovascular diabetic diabetic is a major uh, threat to the india all the, the, the once the diabetic leads to cardiovascular diseases and cancer these are all the chronic diseases so the chronic diseases affect all income level i am a rich i cannot have that the diabetic i am a rich i cannot have the cancer i am a poor you only have the cancer i am a poor uh, i only have the diabetic it's not like that chronic disease will affect all the income levels it's due to mainly it's due to the strong connection between the diet and chronic disease unhealthy eating the people who eats very poorly and it leads to colon cancer obesity and prostate cancer diabetics and this unhealthy eating can also leads to lung cancer and physical inactivity whether you are a rich whether you are a poor doesn't matter whether you are eating very good or you have the very good physical activity this too will directly correlate with the chronic diseases and through which that the physical inactivity can leads to breast cancer high blood pressure and high cholesterol level through which that the cardiovascular diseases if you have the type 2 diabetic and uh, the type 2 diabetic can leads to ca cardiovascular diseases so again that if you have the high blood pressure can leads to kidney disease these are all the interrelated with the, the plant food and our health condition so if you see that uh, metabolic syndromes a set of related condition that predispose ll the key components is a large waist circumference obesity plus 2 out of 4 uh, the people high fasting glucose high serum triglycerides high blood pressure and low of uh, high density lipoprotein they are considered as a cholesterol and if you see that the large waist whether the body uh, your body physics if uh, your body male and female if you see that the pear shaped body 
uh, the body structure is a pear shaped body is a good uh, the body mass index is around 29 less than 1 the ratio uh, bmi ratio is less than 1 is a good health uh, if you see that the male apple shaped body the stomach uh, you know that just uh, chest below and up of the hip the structure of your body shape is the apple shape they are not fit into that the healthy condition uh, uh, this is the, the bmi is the 28 more than 1 the ratio is more than 1 they are the apple shaped body and uh, they are considered as the obesity obese person if you see that again the female uh, pear shaped body is the you know that uh, uh, uh no 30% that the bmi is 30 less than 1.7 they are considered as a good health and if you see that the female that's how the you know the apple shaped belly uh, uh copper if you if you have that the both male and female if you have the belly the shape is like apple shape they are not, not uh, you know considered as a uh, good health they are considered as a uh, you know obese person So 30.5 BMI and 1.2 they are considered as a obese person. This is the you know the the uh, index for considering whether you are a uh, obesity obese person or good health person. So based on that, uh, if you see that uh, obese obesity leads to lot of problems in the people's cytokine production by visible fat. The obesity is due to that the accumulation of fat in your body. in adipose tissue the adipose tissue there are two types of adipose tissue uh, white adipose tissue and red adipose tissue this the major role for this two guys is to accumulate triglycerides excess amount of consumption of the food can accumulate more 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 of triglycerides triglycerides and it re- increases the uh, you know the mass of the cells and uh, to which that uh, we are losing that the bmi proper bmi and diabetic is the two uh, you know there are two different types general the doctors can consider as a diabetic is the three types the third type is the reversible that is a gestational diabetic type 1 diabetic type 2 diabetic and gestational diabetic type 1 diabetic is very prone to have that the autoimmune disorders i will get the autoimmunity that the molecule which can be produced from our body that the same metabolic molecule can destroy the pancreatic beta cells through which that the lack of insulin because of that uh, we we have that uh, type 1 diabetic and type 2 diabetic inability to binds with the receptor even you have that uh, insulin but inability to binds with your receptor this consider this can be considered as a type 2 diabetic and uh, the worldwide especially in india we have very big threat for that diabetic uh, you know keep on increasing the problem of diabetic and it, what is diabetic if you are consuming dietary lot of sugars or the glucose uh, rich of glucose and it reaches to intestine and uh, it enter to the main stream of the blood and if it is all that the pancreas uh, pancreatic pancreas this of the three different types of cells alpha cells beta cell delta cell the i am not going in depth for each and every cells the beta cells plays a major role to regulate the carbohydrate metabolism the pancreatic beta cells can produce as the insulin so the insulin can helps for uh, you know it's like key molecule uh, once if you want to open your house you need the key likewise once if you open your house uh, that uh, you know that the gate can get open and once after gate get open the glucose molecule entered into the cell then once after entered into the cell of the glucose then the glucose can decided for in which part they can uptake and whether it is goes for glycogen biosynthesis or fatty acid biosynthesis or energy synthesis energy synthesis is nothing but glycolysis and uh, acetyl coa and tca cycle and electron transfer system these are all the three phases once if it is everything is perfect and excess amount of that the consumed glucose can re again formed as a polymer as a poly Uh, polysaccharide and this polysaccharide can either can stores in the muscles skeletal muscles as a glycogen or this the the glucose molecule can uh, converted into acetyl coa this acetyl coa can be converted into fatty acid this fatty acid can be formed as a triacylglycerides this triacylglycerides can can be stored 
explode in the adipose tissues so if it is everything is perfect then no problem suppose if insulin is a problem the pancreatic beta cells is not producing it's completely damaged destroyed this kind of uh, problem is the type 1 diabetic uh, this is a 10 percentage of that diabetic patients or type 1 it's a uh, you know the this type 1 diabetic is very common in the young children uh, around less than 20 at the age so the next is a type 2 diabetic is a very common 90 percentage of the diabetics are considered as a type 2 diabetic it's a very common in the adult people what exactly is happening that the pancreatic beta cell can produces the insulin this insulin is a resistant to the gate the key which you have it's a rusted key the or the lock may be rusted lock the even though you have the right key and right lock which cannot be fit and open the gate then only that the glucose can entered inside the cells for burning or degrading so due to that if it is the the uh, insulin is there but it's unable to bind to the receptor it's not activating the glucose for further three pet of glucose that is a one pet is the first pet is the synthesis of uh, glycogen to stored in the muscle cells the second pet is to synthesize the fatty acid can stores as a triglycerides in the adipose tissue and third pet to enter into the glycolysis pathway and tca cycle and electron transfer system the three are the major guys and why this will occurs only the glucose entered into the cell inside if it is the inside it required the insulin to open the gate if it is the lack of insulin or the insulin is there but unable to bind with the receptor and once if it is unable to bind with the receptor then the glucose will not entered into the cell for three phase so the keep on circulating in the main stream then will have leads to lot of diseases so that is the you know retinopathy neuropathy and uh, you know that the retinopathy and neuropathy also that foot ulcer and etc etc these are all the type 2 diabetic uh, complications also the cardiovascular disease i will discuss after this the cardiovascular diseases metabolic syndromes and type 2 diabetic can be preventable and it can be reversible so by maintaining the good health exercise and not smoke and by you know the regular exercise and selecting the the food which you are consuming properly proper diet and also this all can maintain and revert back or preventable so the next is the cardiovascular diseases the cardiovascular cvd is a number of uh, you know that the one globally is a major cause and cvd uh, includes strokes heart attack atherosclerosis and a high blood pressure 30 percentage of the global population it's a uh, uh, death it's due to the cvd uh, 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 by 2030 23.6 billion people million people will die because of the cvd so what is cardiovascular system cardiovascular is, uh, system is nothing but the cardiac that is the uh, heart this heart will pump the blood through all the organs and arteries carry the oxygenated blood blood is oxygenated by passing through the lungs blood blood passes uh, please audience uh, uh, please mute your uh, uh, at for uh, you know that the mic yourself others also get uh, disturbed because of uh, uh, this please i request audience please mute your microphone pachit doctor yes 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 ah uh, you can mute it no problem you can mute uh, that's it. so the the cardiovascular system the blood passes the from the intestine to the liver which removes all ingested toxin and processing ingested fat and if it is fails uh, see here cvd results from elevated blood pressure and plasma fat and low density lipoproteins are the major culprit chylomicrons on the ldl but the hdl are the good guys good cholesterol the blood pressure is affected by dissolved solutes including sodium
so uh, you know that the dissolved salts including sodium uh, and atherosclerosis thickening uh, you know this atherosclerosis is nothing but the thickening of the walls due to the fatty fatty uh, fatty acid deposits so uh, di uh, dietary fats move through the blood stream as a lipoprotein composed of triglycerides cholesterol and proteins uh, you know that the ldl uh, the lipids conjugated with the, the protein they are the lipoproteins there are five different types of lipoproteins they are called as chylomicrons low density lipoprotein high density lipoprotein very low density lipoprotein and then intermediate uh, density lipoproteins so among the five different guys the ldl and chylomicrons are very dangerous guys so they are the cholesterol five different uh, lipoproteins can be considered as a cholesterol this the good cholesterol and bad cholesterol good cholesterol can be considered as a hdl the major that the high density lipoprotein low density lipoproteins are bad cholesterol and uh, the what exactly is the elevated blood plasma uh, the cardiovascular diseases if you see the indices uh, index healthy levels of plasma lipid if you take the uh, your blood profiling for uh, cholesterol estimation or lipid profiling triglycerides should be uh, contained less than 150 mg per deciliter and total cholesterol should be less than 200 mg per deciliter low density lipoprotein should contain your blood 100 mg per deciliter high density lipoprotein should contain more than 60 mg per deciliter of your blood if your blood profile shows this uh, range you are a good if your blood profile shows elevated levels of triglycerides total cholesterol ldl uh, you know more than uh, 150 more than 200 more than 100 uh, uh, triglycerides total cholesterol uh, ldl respectively then you are risk of cardiovascular diseases this lipidemia is nothing but excess amount of plasma fat from the person with the dis lipidemia uh, too much fat which is getting circulated in your blood stream main stream they are called it as dis lipidemia so so if you see that the elevated levels of uh, low density lipoproteins are major contributors of cardiovascular diseases i told you chylomicrons and uh, 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 low density lipoprotein this two are major culprit for the cardiovascular risk disease and heart attack so what exactly it's doing in the mainstream mainstream is nothing but the blood uh, blood stream uh, in the blood stream so the chylomicron low density lipoprotein can very nicely get deposited in the endothelial cells of inside your your blood stream vessels so in this blood stream vessels due to the inflammation the uh, you know that the white blood cells there are five different types of white blood cells granulated white blood cells a granulated white blood cells the macrophages and eosinophil uh, and like different uh, five different types of uh, white blood cells they are the soldiers in our body to uh, to protect our uh, system so in this case if suppose ldl low density because of the low level density it can deposit it in your blood stream and through which that you know uh, ldl oxidation that is a fatty acid oxidation and this fatty acid oxidation this low density lipoprotein can adhere in the main stream of your tube blood vessels and it start inflammation and to form a plaque and uh, this is the event which exactly is happening inflammation Uh, uh that is a uh, leukocytes that is a uh, white blood cells once low density lipoprotein is get deposited the leukocytes can goes because of the inflammatory responses it takes place in that particular site it has to rectified by your system then if you see that like, macrophages get deposited and through which the ldl get adhere and once the ldl get accumulate and accumulate once after sometimes and the your blood flow get reduces as just look at here the damaged artery the outer ring is the atrial wall the rest is damaged and plaque because of the accumulation of low density lipoprotein this accumulation of low density lipoprotein the flow of the blood will get disturbed 
and pressure will goes to heart and due to that the heart risk diseases is takes place so uh, uh, yeah this is the in general so uh, the food obesity and poor diet promote oxidative stress and inflammation and your diet does contain very good then it will be avoided cardiovascular risk diseases and trans fat saturated fats inflammatory signal uh, elevated plasma lipid level insulin resistant is all is a problem for our cardiovascular diseases and poor diet so how you can uh, overcome this cardiovascular diseases by consumption of dietary fruits and you can control uh, uh, the uh, the food which we consume uh, what kind of food we are eating whether we are consuming balanced diet or we are consuming uh, you know that uh, we have the good uh, uh, physical exercise and etc and this is a mechanism of the cvd is uncertain if you see that if you consume omega 3 fatty acid plant derived polyphenols uh, oxidative stress inflammation can be prevented whatever that the lipid get peroxidized oxidized this oxidation that uh, the, the omega 3 fatty acid and plant derived polyphenols will scavenge free radicals that another ross biology reactive oxygen biology is a major player for cvd cardiovascular diseases so this um, enormous amount of uh, reactive oxygen species get generated in the this event if you consume polyphenols which can be very nicely scavenged and you will be uh, uh, you know avoided from the risk disease of cardiovascular and other beneficial contribution comes from the exercise and aspirin the tablets the cinnam you know that the cinchona uh, aspirin is nothing but uh, you know uh, the salicylic acid salicylate or acetyl salicylate that is otherwise that aspirin is the brand name and polyphenols may help to reduce the fat uptake and to reduce the inflammation event so these are all the different events can be done by the epigallocatechic acid which is uh, available in the uh, green tea and the onion uh, uh, garlic so fat uptake into the blood can reduce us and ldl low density lipoprotein oxidation can be prevented once after prevented addition deposition of that the ldl in the blood blood vessels can be prevented inflammation and plaque formation can be avoided by consumption of the polyphenolic compounds and phytonutrients so uh, so what are the recommendations to avoid cvd consume fats in moderate level include your diet omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acid and also avoid trans fat in uh, you know you can consume cis fat maximize your intake of fruits and vegetables and uh, you can maintain the bmi proper bmi and then you can uh, avoid the next chronic uh, uh, disease is the cancer everyone is talking about the cancer and uh, uh, it's a very prevalent in uh, india as well as in the worldwide Uh, the cancer is the second leading cause of death worldwide uh, the cancer involves genetic changes i am not going to uh, uh, you know more in depth about the cancer progression and etc etc so the next is the if you see that how the plant food can prevent this many plant chemicals helps to prevent the cancer incidence or progression if you see that the carcinogen uh, comes from your uh, surroundings environment and etc etc or genetic changes some compounds detoxify the carcinogenic molecules in your body or around the uh, uh, you and some molecules can others prevent or slow the progression of the uh, precancerous cells to metastatic tumors and then stage 3 stage 4 and etc etc so the many plant chemicals it's already been proved anti cancer property whether it's a, you know this level or whether it may be at this level i am just showing the arrow or this level or this level so plant based phytonutrients the solve the anti cancer property in either any one of the uh, uh, prevention so here if you see the some phytonutrients isothiocyanates epigallocatechic acid genistrin lycopene these are all is uh, you know that uh, pharmacologically proven as well as the clinically they have proven these are all the compounds that solve the very excellent protective function against you know anti cancer property 
and dietary fruits and vegetables can also contribute the prevention of the cancer if you eat more variety of vegetables and fruits and whole grains pulses such as beans you can avoid limit consumption of energy dense that is a you know the coca cola uh, they, they are the uh, sugary drinks uh, any kind of momento coca cola any kind of this preserved uh, 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 drinks are uh, leads to cause the cancer and limit consumption of red meat avoid processed meat uh, since uh, we are uh, we are directly even you know the few months back that the process by processing by the, the fish Uh, added with the formalin these are all the process the formalin also uh, can cause the cancer uh, that the formalin exposed with the meat can cause the cancer so these are all the we need to avoid uh, uh, don't use supplementation to protect against the cancer and only through the nutritional aspects only we can control through the diet and physical activities are uh, very very important and uh, uh, you know that uh, be as lean as you can without become the underweight so these are all the prevention and what exactly with this uh, uh, you know that the lecture what exactly in srm we are doing in in our group of, of you know that the plant based product uh, we are concentrating with the small molecules as well as the macro molecules with the different uh, uh, aspects uh, we have identified uh, the lipid inhibitors to manage the obesity and to control the diabetic and cardiovascular diseases and we have identified sorry for the interruption of my internet so um, uh, the lipid inhibitors and amylase inhibitors uh, you can reduce the so amylase inhibitors you can you know the weight loss lower glycemic index lower insulin resistance and you can reduces the blood glucose level so we have identified several amylase inhibitor also we have identified several lipid inhibitors from the food as well as the medicinal plants also we have uh, you know that uh, identified lot of trypsin inhibitors which can suppresses the you know the promotion of stages of carcinogenesis and also the suppression of oncogene expression also that the feeding deterrents of insect and etc uh, uh, you know that uh, feeding deterrents in the rats by creating uh, several hypertrophy inhibition of carcinogen induced protease activity and uh, this is a general view about the alpha amylase inhibitor the you know once the plant get exposed to the insect uh, which start uses lot of uh, protease inhibitors so with that uh, model we have adopted to isolate the whatever that the plant got exposed to lot of insect that insect uh, uh, exposed to plants contain lot of protease inhibitor you can very easily you can identify and isolate that uh, the protease inhibitor from such a kind of plants and uh, this is uh, the alpha amylase we have isolated from leucus aspera and this is a protein which we have purified and uh, we have uh, Uh, characterized around uh, 20 less than 29 kilo dalton proteins and we have identified alpha amylase inhibitor and the quite interesting story of uh, what we have done in 2015 uh, that the perula supported uh, that the perunga ink powder so the people we start to consume the perula uh, it in, uh, everyone is talks about that it increases the digestion in what way it increases the digestion we just uh, looked into that uh, the molecular level we have isolated uh, the proteins which is abundant in the um, resin uh, perula supported is nothing but the uh, exudate comes from the root so from that the root we have purchased uh, uh, the root from the, the farmers of afghanistan as well as the uh, iran and from there the, uh, we have purchased directly and we brought into that india and our lab and we have processed and we have isolated the proteins and peptides also we have isolated small molecules we have isolated the proteins around 27 kilo dalton we have uh, you know in vitro studies we have uh, you know we have analyzed this particular protein with the uh, trypsin uh, chymotrypsin and pepsin and uh, uh, very surprisingly this particular protein stabilizes the trypsin activity 
more than 24 hours. As you can see that in the blue color picture where I am showing the cut step, and this paper is available in the website. You know, it's uh, in 2017 we have published this paper, and uh, uh, this particular protein also a very nicely step, you know extend the half life of chymotrypsin. That's why the perungayam perula asapotida if you introduce. Uh, into your diet, it extends the off life of the digestive enzymes. That's why it is easy to digest the food which you consume. Also, that the protein which we have isolated uh, from the perula, it antibacterial, anti quorum sensing activity. And also, we have isolated few peptides, natural peptides. Uh, we have tested against the cancer cell lines, and it pro provide very excellent natural uh, peptides isolated from perula supported a root exudate which gives excellent uh, anti-cancer property and uh, also antioxidant activity and also we have purified uh, you know that uh, we everyone is called uh, the uh, that uh, last year that the government of india has announced that tinospora quadifolia is the indian national medicinal plants we have worked in 2014 and 14 we have isolated the trypsin inhibitor from the tinospora quadifolia Generally, we call it as uh, in Hindi, we call uh, uh, Gudichi, uh, 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 in Tamil, Sindhil Kodi, Tinospora cordifolia. You can see it, uh, 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 you know, the balament tissue uh, uh, on the tree, which can be, it's a climber. You can see that balament tissues uh, in the root, uh, that, uh, you know, the uh, hanging, uh, uh, you know, like uh, 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 twine, twiners, like uh, hanging guys. In the tip of that, you have the balament tissues. And this uh, plant, we have isolated the stem of the protein. We have isolated the trypsin inhibitor. The molecular weight is around 27 kilodalton. This trypsin inhibitor, again, very excellently, we have recently, that uh, two months back, uh, the, the, this trypsin inhibitor protein, we have uh, do docked with uh, chicken gunia virus and very nicely, the viral protein, proteases, very nicely can inhibit it. Everyone is talks about tinosporin body of powder, if you consume, it's an antiviral property. Uh, you know, now that the people are talking about Kabasura Kudinir, that Kabasura Kudinir also does contain the Tinospora body polyar, one of the ingredients. So uh, again, we have isolated the natural peptides from Tinospora body polyar naturally. Uh, uh, and also that this particular peptides uh, does have that uh, very excellent antioxidant property. Also, we have tested the anti-cancer uh, property. And we, we have also that, you know, this is a data of the Tinosbra cordifolia peptides for anti-cancer and anti-proliferative of the cancerous cells. And also we have isolated the Bigna Mungo seed coat, uh, coli. That uh, we are uh, providing this uh, after removing the uh, the bigna mungo ulundu, remaining the coal we are uh, uh, you know uh, dumping into the cattle as a feed. From there we have isolated the proteins and does have the larvicidal activities, and uh, also we have isolated the peptides and proteins from piper nigrum. That is a uh, uh, piper nigrum is a uh, you know that uh, uh, black pepper milagu. From that milagu, we have extracted a lot of, uh, 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 you know, uh, naturally antioxidant, and they have the radical scavenging activity, very excellent radical scavenging activity. Also, we have tested against the colon cancerous cell lines, and very uh, excellently we got uh, data. And this paper also is available. And uh, the uh, one more good story, what we have done that in uh, by enhancing the campathosin. Campathosin is uh, one of the or the you know, anti-cancer molecule, which can be used for chemotherapeutic drug. This campathosin we have enhanced in vitro condition, and we got uh, tenfold increases the campathosin molecule very excellently in vitro by challenging the cells, cell lines uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, the chitin and enhanced uh, accumulation of campathosin in the uh, plant cells and we purified and characterized and also we got tested again the cell lines with the enhanced campathosin molecules and the next story is to you know quorum sensing quorum sensing is nothing but the communication between two bacteria bacterial system to to reproduce a threshold level to pass the disease or to how the increasing the population that is a quorum sensing story 
okay this is what that the quorum sensing where that the plant molecules if it is a beneficial uh, establishment of microbiota is good if it is a harmful bacteria which can cause the disease uh, on the human the pseudomonas chlorosan pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa is a very common pathogen in the urinary tract infections also that lung uh, suppose if you are spitting out the sputum sali the sali uh, uh, if it is in the green color this is the person you can easily you can identify the person is having the pseudomonas uh, infection in their lung so the sali which is having that the green color fast green color and the green color if it is there in the sputum of the the person who infected the, uh, with the Uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa infection then very nicely you can have the green color that the phycocyanin uh, production that is a, a virulence factor which can be produced by the this bacteria to fight against the host system because of that only the sputum is green color it's phycocyanin so these are all the you know in which this particular bacteria in which location this this paper is also available in the micro uh, that the Uh, a medical hypothesis uh, we have published in 2015 this particular paper uh, there are four different targets the phytonutrients can inhibit the bacterial quorum sensing and through which you can arrest this is the alternate therapy for antibiotics and these are all the different results which we have obtained and this paper also published in uh, pems microbial letters that is the oxford university journal and the 2018 we have published this paper that the amino acid which comes from the plant source which can very nicely inhibit the leucine will have the very potential quorum sensing inhibitor of this particular bacteria that is we have chosen that the chromobacterium vilesium as the model bacteria also we have extended our uh, uh, you know research into the pseudomonas aeruginosa also multi direct resistant bacteria also we have extended and we have published two more papers uh, uh, in the quorum sensing related inhibitors related phytonutrients as the quorum sensing inhibitor also the peptides comes from natural peptides also very strong potential quorum sensing inhibitors also these are all the different uh, flow cytometry and uh, confocal microscopic uh, results for quorum sensing also that the compound which we have extracted and the quorum sensing uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, bacterial virulence factor also we have quantified by through lc msms and hplc based quantification we have done after treatment of this drugs and compounds derived from the plants and we have uh, ab absorbed very reduced level of the uh, 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 you know that the um, the spectrum of uh, resistant molecule produced by the bacteria that is a bacterial pathogenesis and uh, uh, to summarize this uh, uh, we have uh, you know that uh, directly that the plant based molecules like macromolecules and micromolecules and nutrients phytonutrients these are all directly correlate with the uh, human health as well as the chronic diseases chronic diseases like cardiovascular diseases uh, type 2 diabetic diabetic and cancer these are all the direct correlation between the food uh, derived from the plant and the human health and thank you for your patient listening and uh, thank you very much for the organizer also i extend my sincere thanks to that the american Uh, physiological society for providing that uh, this excellent uh, ppts to uh, explore uh, my knowledge into the audience and also i extend my special thanks to dr kumaran for inviting me to give this talk also i uh, sincerely thanks to our srm management for providing the excellent facility to do such a kind of research in srm university and to publish high end uh, uh, impact factor journals and uh, thank you one and all now if you have any queries uh, you may please uh, uh, raise and then you can ask the questions hello yes sir any question from audience okay thank you my dear best friend for today your wonderful and very informative valuable talk about the natural product for human health management now i would like to invite dr r nisanti assistant professor srm institute of institute chennai for give the vote of thanks our today guest 
uh, it is my great privilege to uh, deliver a vote of thanks on this occasion i on behalf of all the participants of this webinar extend a very hearty vote of thanks to dr r pachepin who enlightened us with uh, his powerful lecture and to quote valuable time of our uh, uh, your uh, busy schedule eat right to stay fit is the need of our message in your lecture you elaborated the importance of uh, the right plant food to be taken uh, to combat the all possible chronic diseases uh, sir once again i thank you very much for your wonderful and informative session and for having us sir. thank you very much and i also extend my sincere thanks to dr s kumaran for giving me an opportunity to deliver my thanks to the speaker thank you sir for giving me the opportunity and now it is over to dr s kumaran uh, thank you dr nisanti uh, thank you dr pachepan for uh, accepting my invitation thank you thank you so much now leave the meeting thank you thank you so much for, uh, for your, all the participants this is a, i think there is two hours no huh? thank you anna sridhar anna thank you now thank leave you. the meeting yes thank you i am going to end the meeting yes. okay